join the conversation as always on Twitter at CTV Harris. She's the show anchor and uh, I'm sure she's going to be in the pro on the program tomorrow. So that's our CTV Harris if you want to have this conversation and get along into the big picture. And you can also tweet at me at bbozin. That's where I manage my own business club for you and for your own business. And of course, on all platforms around the world, you know where to find channels, television, wherever you are on planet Earth. And of course, even if you are in space or under the deep sea, as long as you have the mobile app and you just log on. Isn't that interesting? Guinness Nigeria, the second largest brewing company listed on the market uh, today, reporting a very nasty earnings net loss for the first quarter, that is between July and September 2016, was at 2.22 billion naira. The, in the same three months of July to September last year, Guinness Nigeria reported 362.29 million naira. Uh, but that despite the fact that its revenue uh, shot up to 23 billion in the period under review, but the cost of sales uh, moved up almost 4 billion naira over a 12-month period. Okay, you've seen some of the stories we're focusing on in the news. The Senate president is saying thank you to the Nigerian army for their decision to patronize the, some of the hardware makers, footwear to be precise, in southeast Nigeria. Aba is the, what you call the Aba shoemakers. I've been there uh, about twice and I've seen the footwears that those, what you call the combat wears, those local makers, industrialists could produce. But they complained about three years ago that they weren't being patronized. Now the Nigerian army is talking about buying some of these 50,000 units. And if 50,000 footwears for Nigerian soldiers are purchased, from the local markets in Aba Southeast Nigeria, just imagine what that will do if you have it for the Navy, for the Air Force, and everyone else in the security uh, system, including the customs, the uh, civil defense, the immigration, and everyone else. Imagine what will happen to the Southeast economy and Aba to be precise. Thank you, Mr. Senate President. He also says the Air Force is also being thanked for considering partnering with Innocent Motors, an indigenous automaker, to get some spares for the aircraft. Meantime, meantime, air passengers declined slightly in second quarter. We're waiting numbers for the third quarter from the statistics office says 9.1% was the decline in human and cargo uh, throughput in the second quarter ended July. And I know June, I beg your pardon. That's June. Then the $30 billion controversy is still there. The federal government or the executive branch plans to uh, borrow $30 billion, about that figure, $29.29 billion, thereabout, uh, from foreign sources to balance the budget, make some payments, as well as fast-track infrastructure projects. But the National Assembly says they want more details. They're not convinced about the arguments from the Bukhari's administration. Not just yet. Okay, so we hang it in there. Let's go to the state of the economy. Last week was the FBN Capital Annual Investors Conference, and hundreds of business executives and technocrats sat together for one single day to talk about the state of the economy, the economy at crossroads. That was the theme. And, but views remain divergent, like night and day, on whether Nigeria's economy is in recession or we're going through stagflation. So you had all of this in the street. Now this is one interview with our uh, Tempo Ashaju, who is a business news producer, and he had a few minutes with the uh, head of macroeconomic and fixed income research at FBN Capital, Gregory Constein. Let's listen to this. Uh, okay, well, look, uh, are we in recession? I, at, some point you, at some point, we all have to accept the data that exists. So people can say, oh, well, I don't trust the data. But the provider of data is the National Bureau of Statistics, and they're telling us that, we're in, that Nigeria is in recession. And there's plenty of you know, peripheral evidence that it is in recession. So I think we have to go along with that. And remember also that the, there's, actually there's one very visible driver of this, which is the sabotage of oil production. And that, that is what uh, obviously, that obviously reduces oil production, and the oil production um, fall in Q2 was actually by far the largest element explaining the contraction of Q2. 
2.1% year on year. I think the, they have to be patient, I'm afraid, is the answer. And um, I think many of the government's policies are right. Uh, the government may be accused of being a bit slow. And also it may be said that the government is overly centralized. So too many decisions have to go to the top. So this gives the impression of being a slow-moving government. So I think there's some truth, there's some truth in that, clearly. But no, I think many of the decisions are, are the right ones, and people have to be patient. I mean, there's no, there's no immediate cure to the shortage of foreign exchange, in my view. There are lots of incremental steps to reduce it, but there's no one single step to cure it overnight. Is borrowing the way out for us in this country? We know that the President Buhari is looking to get approval from the National Assembly to be able to embark on a $30 billion loan facility. But of course the DMO is saying that $22 billion is the maximum that we can get. Right, okay. Well, I must say, I didn't see the DMO's comment, but, the, but it, is, it is $30 billion over three years. And also, I mean, out of that, other than the Eurobond program, it is all concessional borrowing. None of it is marketed borrowing. So 33 billion, so four and a half billion is the euro bond program, which is market rates. So currently the Nigerian euro bonds, the longest majority of the yield is, is um, around 7%. Um, but most of the borrowing for which the president has sought the approval of the National Assembly is concessional. So in other words, the rate is 1%, 2%. So um, I, if you ask me, is it the right way to go? And in fact, additionally, the, the federal government could make a greater use of, you could leverage more by making greater use of guarantees, so, which is a contingent liability. It's not shown effectively as an increase in the debt. There's hardly nothing else to talk about at that investors conference on the state of Nigeria's economy with investors and everyone trying to wrap their heads around what is going on. That's on that side. But if you go on the streets, what are Nigerians thinking about the state of the current economic headwind? So investors and the public have been advised to be patient with the Nigerian government in addressing the present economic recession. And that advice, well, comes from the chief executive officer of FBN Merchant Bank, Coyote Akikube, and he spoke also to uh, our producer, Tempula Shaju, on the 2015 uh, Investors Conference. Let's talk about economy at crossroads and how to deal with the headwinds. You know, we always try and be...